We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to this service of Holy Communion here at Christchurch in Brentor. Whether you're here in person or will be watching the recording later, it's really good to have you with us. We've got the beautiful flowers left over from a wedding blessing that happened yesterday. And it feels quite fitting for the, uh, for the readings that we've got, so you'll have to listen out for those. But let's begin our worship by singing our first hymn together, which is number 766. And we'll say together the prayer of preparation as we come together to worship. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, blend the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have mercy. And so bringing to mind the times that we have failed to follow these commandments, 
Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And confident of our forgiveness, we rejoice and say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King. Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So let us pray that we would obtain the promises of God. Merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We'll have our Old and New Testament readings. The Old Testament reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 55, beginning of the 10th verse. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy, and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall, shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament reading is from Romans chapter 8. There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. 
To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit that dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Would you stand to sing our next hymn, which is number 646, God is working his purpose out of me. Please remain standing for our Gospel reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. It's from chapter 13, verses 1 to 9, and then 18 to 23. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, 
and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil. And they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the word and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Generous God, may my spoken words reflect the written words and lead us to your living words, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please do sit down. Sometimes I think that you can tell that Jesus wasn't a farmer when you read this parable. As though any self-respecting farmer would be going out and throwing seed all over the path or in the weeds or on the rocky ground. When you know that any good farmer would be well practised in his sowing, in his casting of seeds in the right places for them to grow, would spend time scaring off the birds. And yes, you can absolutely tell me that the parable tells us about God's relentless generosity about the good news that is poured out on us all abundantly, whether we're in good soil or in rocky places. But I think sometimes we assume that if we're not producing a crop that's 30 or 60 or 100 times what was sown in the first place, that we must therefore be falling short of what God asks of us. But also in this parable, God is the farmer. God knows the soil that he's farming from top to bottom. God knows the patch that's dry and the patch that's boggy. The patch that got a good load of manure the last time round and so should do good stuff this year. And the patch that needs the next load that's coming. God knows where the rocks are, where the ground is dry and hard. And so it's not really the plant's fault if the sower sows the seed in those places and the yield isn't what was hoped for. I think sometimes the expectation of fruitfulness is something that can be a little overwhelming. How on earth do you actually measure the yield of a human life? Does the person of privilege who goes to university, gets a good job, makes a lot of money, giving it to charity, spending time with their family and friends, does that person have a higher yield than the person whose soil is shallower and spends most of their time just trying to get by? sharing perhaps the little that they have. I don't think that God is into counting that way. 
If God were, creation would be full of straight lines and tidy boxes, easily quantifiable. But creation is full of chaos and diversity, change and life. So maybe we have to go back again to God's relentless generosity, to the God who sees when the smallest of sparrows falls to the ground, who turns water into the finest of wine, who sows seed both where the yield will be extravagant and where the yield will be minimal. Our Old Testament reading told us in its beautiful poetry that the sower knows their stuff, that God's news shall not return to me fruitless, but shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the task I gave it. And so if the seed that falls to the fertile and good ground produces abundant fruit, and if the seed that falls in hard and dry ground produces the smallest of green shoots, both have accomplished what the sower purposed. I think we're sometimes made to think that the large and the flashy are the only things that matter. The revival of hundreds of thousands of people in a tent or the new person turning up at church. When sometimes I think that the only good fruit that grows is simply that someone is pulled out of a difficult life just for a moment and is able to make a connection with someone else, is able to receive kindness and maybe in the fullness of time to offer kindness back. Because the thing about God is that God never runs out of seed. There is always enough. There is always more in the granary. And over time, perhaps those small green shoots break up and loosen hard ground. Are the farmers come along and notice that this patch of earth or this person needs a little more care and attention and maybe over time fruit grows or maybe it doesn't but still the sower keeps casting the seeds and sprouts make green life fuzz over what was dry and dead and maybe what also helps to remember is that no farmer no sower sows the same seed in every place I may be stretching the parable here just a little bit. <laughs> but take Dartmoor. There are no fields of waving wheat, no potatoes or celery stretching for miles like there are in the fens that I grew up near. Our farmers take the ground that they have and use it to grow cows and sheep and grass. They keep chickens. Our farmers know what can be done with the ground that they have and care for it in the way that it needs. And I think, I hope that the same is true of God. The fruit that you see growing in someone else's life might not be the same fruit that's growing in yours. If you're busy growing a carrot, you're going to be hugely disappointed if you're actually expecting a leak. <laughs> or wheat when you're actually growing lettuce. <laughs> okay, I probably have stretched the parable beyond its breaking point at this point. <laughs> but our churches need all of those different fruits that each of us brings and offers. It's our diversity that gives us the strength that we need to respond to the different things that come to us in our communities and the lives around us. To be able to be responsive, 
to acknowledge the different grounds, the different needs that we're surrounded by, and to accept the fruit that comes from God's good news sown in each of those lives. To be able to accept that is a gift. And so my prayer for you is that you would be able to recognise the fruit that God is sowing, is God's sowing, is growing in you and in the people around you. That you would be given the words and the resources to nurture that fruit that you would not allow comparison to steal your joy in the work that God is doing in you. That you would instead rejoice in the beautiful diversity of the ways that God is at work in our world and in each one of us. That you would find cypress growing instead of thorns and myrtles instead of brambles. That with all creation you would find yourself free to celebrate the relentless generosity of the sower. Amen. Amen. So let's stand and declare our faith in the God who sows with relentless generosity, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We believe, believe in, in one, one God, God, the, the Father, Father, the Almighty. Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Dear Lord, this day we thank you for the faithful service of all who keep the church in this place, a witness to your love. We thank you especially for Rosie, and we pray that she will be an inspiration to those she will be serving in the future. Indeed, Lord, we thank you for all our ministers, ordained and lay, who give their time and energy to maintaining the order of service and welcoming all who come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you too for those whose service in all our churches is often unseen and unreported. We thank you for the cleaners, for the dusters and polishers, those who create the pew sheets, who bake the cakes, who arrange the flowers and take out the dead ones, who pour the tea and the coffee and remember those who need a helping hand. For all their service, Lord, we thank you. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayers. Lord, 
We thank you that we live in a peaceful part of the world, but we know that this world is not at peace. We pray for all those caught up in war, for our friends in Ukraine, for all those suffering wherever they may be from the horrors of war. And we pray too for the reluctant conscripts, those from Russia and elsewhere. May you bring peace and justice for all. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you that we are fortunate enough to live in a green and pleasant land. We thank you for the rain. That means we can worry less about droughts here. But we pray for all those suffering from extreme heat in Southern Europe and the United States, and for all those who are enduring severe droughts, crop failures, and the prospect of starvation. Help us to do all we can, Lord, to help the suffering. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we know that many are finding life hard at this time. Every week, more ask for our prayers, and we bring them all before you for your support and comfort, Lord. We pray for Lynn, Peter and Carol, Dave, Becky, Alex, Shirley, Val, Steve, Zach, Diana, Maureen, Anna, Harry, Cheryl, Gary, Ali, Pam and Dan, Matt, Aidan, Sandra, John, Lillian, and Sandra. Some of them we know are awaiting results of tests. Some of them we know are finding life very hard at the moment. And in a moment of silence, we bring before you others we know who need their love and comfort. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we know we have much to be thankful for, that we can meet here without fear in this place. And we thank you for the weddings in Brent Hall this week. We pray for Tony and his bride, married on the tour on Monday, and for Izzy and Dan, married here yesterday. We pray for all those planning their weddings here in the coming months, and we celebrate with them all the life to come. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand for the peace? God is love, and God, those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. And so may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of God's peace. And we'll sing our next hymn, which is number 358, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His, His Spirit is, is with us. us. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children, and welcomed us to sit and meet with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross, and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night that he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to, to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith 
and with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Let us pray. God of our pilgrimage, you have led us to the living water. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Please stand for our final hymn. It's now the green blade rises which is one of mine and David's favourites, but I can't remember what the number is. 212. 212. <laughs>
sit down for our notices. And first I have a rather joyful notice, which is to say that I have some bands of marriage to publish. So I published the bands of marriage between Ursen Hachioru and of Keris Melinda Hall, both of the parish of St Paul's Bow Common. This is for the first time of asking. And if any of you know any reason in law why these persons may not marry each other, you are to declare it now. Lovely silence. Well, with the, with the kid noise in the background, but I don't think that counts. So let's pray for that couple. God, we play, pray for Ersan and for Keris as they prepare for their wedding day, that their love would would grow stronger for each other and that they would become more and more aware of your great love for them in all the preparations and organisations, that they would grow into a strong and happy married life together. And we ask all this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And Helen, I'm going to ask you to come and give the other notices. Now, first of all, Having said we thank you people, we'd like to thank Nicolette for the cake um, today, but if we would like cake in the future, please could people sign up here. We right. want cake in the We do want cake. We do want cake. Um, this evening we are up on the tour with Hazel for a very special family evening prayer, um, and Hazel's grandchildren will be, I believe, taking part of the service, so that should be wonderful at six o'clock up at St Michael's. Now, in a couple of weeks' time, we have a memorial service for Anne Clark, who, if you were looking for somebody who did dusting, polishing, flower arranging, um, making tea, washing up, absolutely everything, Anne, who died last December, was the epitome of that sort of person. And she has a special memorial service here, which Sally is taking um, a week on Saturday, the 29th, two o'clock here, and everybody is very welcome. She was a volunteer at Oxfam Bookshop, Lidford Gorge Tea Rooms and Buckland Abbey and she was a stalwart of the Brentorians and she was always in church making sure everything was as it should be. So we do very, very much miss Anne and her family are coming down for the service, which we're really pleased about. And afterwards there will be tea in the Village Hall, thanks to the Village Hall Committee. So there's that coming up. A very busy weekend this is going to be, that's the 29th. Because on the next day, the 30th, as part of the Archangel's Way pilgrimage, we have a very, very special service again with Jim Causley, a well-known folk singer, who is going to be singing his song about the Archangel Way up on the tour at St Michael's at 6 o'clock on July the 30th. And again, all are welcome. And I've got some flyers for that if you'd like to take some, if anybody would knows of someone else who might be interested. Yes, definitely, Hilary. Okay, yes, pick you up at the end. <laughs> and lastly, it is cucumber season. Yay. I have quite a lot at the back, which we would be very, very grateful if some of you would like to take away. Um, I would recommend you might want to peel them because they're grown in polytunnel and not in a fantastic commercial environment, but they were all picked this morning, so they don't get any fresher than that. All right, so thank you very much, Rosie. Thank you. Then a final blessing before we have tea and coffee and cake. <laughs> May the Lord bless you and watch over you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.